All right, welcome to Skepticamp. Um, as you can see, my topic is called Gedanken Experiments. And this is just a German term, it means thought experiments. And we're going to go into a few examples of some famous thought experiments. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you an, ex an actual experiment that was performed during Apollo 15 mission to the moon, 1971. Commander David Scott performs an experiment on the surface of the moon. Okay, so that wasn't, the results of that experiment wasn't too surprising. Imagine if something went awry though, right? Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Galileo was wrong. How did we get to the moon anyway? I don't... So that was an actual experiment, but it brings up the topic of Galileo. And everyone, a lot of people know the story of Galileo um, dropping weights of, of different sizes off the Tower of Pisa to judge whether or not, you know, uh, objects of different weights would fall at the same speed or not. And this is likely to be apocryphal. Likely that never actually occurred. In fact, Galileo just used a thought experiment to determine that objects of different weights fell at the same speed. And you can, you can see his, his experiment, his thought experiment here. He imagined, well, if we drop two objects independently and they have different weights, supposing we take the um, hypothesis that they drop different speeds, that heavier objects fell faster, as Aristotle thought. Now let's consider the case where we take those same two objects, but we connect them together with some sort of tether, and we drop them. Now the heavier object should be slowed down because it's being, because it's being pulled backward by the lighter object, which falls slower. But now let's take those same two objects and, tight, and tightly connect them so that they're essentially one object that's even heavier. So now the, it should fall even faster because it's connected, because it's one object that's even heavier. So we went into a contradiction because if we connect these, the objects loosely, they fall slower, and if you connect them tightly, they fall faster. And you can see there's a contradiction here, and it's only resolved if, um, in the case where the two objects would fall at the same speed, then there's no contradiction. And so that's how Galileo came to the realizations that objects fall, fall at the same speed. So amazing that he could determine this just by thought, without even an experiment. Now the next person I want to talk about is Isaac Newton. And everyone knows the story of Newton being inspired by falling apples. Perhaps maybe, maybe an apple even fell on his head. But that also is likely to be apocryphal. So really what Newton was concerned about was why, does, why do apples fall to the ground and yet the moon does not fall to the ground? And he, he f found the solution with a thought experiment. He imagined a huge cannon that could fire cannonballs at various velocities. And if, if you fired this cannon, you, it would actually, the cannonball would actually travel much further than you might expect because the earth is curving away from the trajectory of the cannonball. And so if you could fire a cannonball with a sufficient velocity, what would happen is the Earth would curve away from the uh, trajectory of the cannonball as the, the cannonball is falling to Earth. It would never strike the Earth. It essentially would be in orbit. And that's exactly what happens with the Moon. So with this thought experiment, Newton unified the celestial with the terrestrial. You know, he, he showed that apples and moons follow the same laws, laws of physics. It's just that the moon is, has a velocity that allows it to avoid striking the Earth. Now we move from Newton to perhaps the master of thought experiments, Albert Einstein. Uh, Einstein once said that he imagined traveling beside a beam of light, and this inspired him to, to uh, generate some of his, his theories of relativity. 
And there's a lot of quotes att attributed to Einstein. Um, in fact, if you, uh, the internet is basically uh, replete with various quotes that are attributed to him. And in fact, a lot of them he didn't actually uh, say. <laughs> in fact, he even, he even commented on this himself. Um, at, at, at least that's what I read anyway. <laughs> so here's a, here's a thought experiment from Einstein. He imagined a train with two observers. One observer is stationary beside the train and, one, and another observer is riding with the train. And so as the train is progressing, he imagined that lightning bolts would strike the front and the back of the train. And the light from those lightning bolts would reach the stationary observer at the same time. And that observer would think that those two lightning bolts struck simultaneously. Now let's rewind and look at the same situation from the perspective of the uh, person on the train. The lightning bolts strike, and the observer on the train sees lightning bolt A as having happened first, and lightning bolt B as having happened second. So the two observers don't agree on whether or not the lightning bolts were simultaneous. And in this way, it seems like a s simple thing, but really, this shows that there's no such thing as absolute time, because you know, time seems to depend on your state of motion. And, and with this experiment, it, he demolished the concept of absolute time and sh showed that time is relative, and hence the, the, uh, the theory of relativity. So we've been talking about various very important thought experiments that are relatively modern, but really humans have been running thought experiments for a long time. And you can imagine early humans perhaps hunting j dangerous prey. You know, you can throw your spear and see what happens, or you can think about it and, and imagine what might happen. So you, you could decide that perhaps it's not a good, good idea to attack. You know, the, the bear might you might miss, the bear might decide to attack you. Um, you know, perhaps you can run a thought experiment where you imagine asking a friend of yours from the village to help defend against the bear should it turn to attack. And you can even run the ex a thought experiment. You know, what happens if um, perhaps it, the, my friend is unsuccessful at defending against the bear he's killed? Perhaps what will the villagers think of me? Maybe they'll blame me for, for my friend's death. So you can see this becomes quickly a very complicated thought experiment. You have to um, imagine the behavior of the bear, imagine uh, the behavior of your friend, imagine the psychology of an entire village just to run this one thought experiment. And yet, this conveys a serious um, advantage evolutionarily because you, know, you can let your ideas die in your stead. You don't have to go into risky situations you can think about it and avoid them instead. So this ability to imagine uh, different scenarios, it, can be, it could have provided the um, evolutionary selective pressure that resulted in our larger brains and gave us the ability to reflect and even the ability to um, have a sense of self-awareness. So our se not only does this ability to run uh, thought experiments give us some of the best and greatest th scientific discoveries in history, but it may have even resulted in our own ability to reflect and give us a, a sense of self-identities. So to sum up, I'd like to say that maybe you too can be can, can have a great discovery. All you need is a big brain and an easy chair. <laughs> Thank you very much.